Of all the ubiquitous things in our environment, roads are probably one of the least noticed. They're pretty hard to get away from, and yet, most of us don't give much consideration for how they're made. Turns out, there are a lot of ways to make a road. Not to get too philosophical, but there's really no right answer to what a road even is. How much improvement of the ground is needed before it stops being just the ground and becomes a road? Depending on the capabilities of your vehicle, sometimes not much. Over the years, the demands on roadways have increased as more people and goods are on the move. So, the designs have evolved alongside. The Romans were famous for their stone-paved roads, many of which still exist a couple of thousand years later. In modern times, the design of pavement has converged significantly. The vast majority of roadways worldwide, if they're paved at all, are paved with one material. Hey, on today's episode, we're talking about how asphalt concrete for roadways is made. Asphalt is a black liquid substance that's a byproduct of processing crude petroleum. Asphalt is a key component of waterproofing and insulation materials in roofing shingles, but its best known use is for paving roads. Asphalt cement is a byproduct of crude oil, the key ingredient they mix with crushed rocks and other minerals to make paving asphalt. So production begins at the paving plant quarry, where some 15 meters below ground, Workers driving heavy machinery collect boulders of granite that were blasted off the rock walls. Trucks transport the rocks to the paving plant, which is right on the quarry site. They dump their cargo into the primary crusher. It takes mammoth force to crush solid rock. The flywheels that amplify the motor's energy weigh more than six metric tons. The primary crusher empties onto a mobile conveyor belt, which transports the crushed rocks to an outdoor storage area when it's time to make the asphalt. The rocks travel via conveyor belt from the storage area to a screening building to be classified by size. The rocks tumbled downward over a series of incline screens whose largest holes are 10 centimeters big. What's too large to drop through goes to a secondary crusher that reduces the rocks to 10 centimeters or smaller, then sends them to a third or tertiary crusher that further reduces them to 2 centimeters smaller. What's small enough to pass through the screens bypasses the secondary crusher and goes directly to the tertiary crusher. After this last crushing stage, the largest stones are 2 centimeters in size. Everything smaller than 5 millimeters goes in one pile that includes stone dust created by the crushing process. Stones 10 to 14 millimeters go into another pile. Stones 5 to 10 millimeters go into another truck transfer material from each pile to separate compartments called feed bins. What exactly goes into the paving asphalt depends on what's being paved, but generally these are the four ingredients, 5 to 10 millimeters of stone and 10 to 14 millimeters of stone. Sand, stone dust, the ingredient proportions vary according to what paving asphalt will be used for, along with sand and stone dust as fillers which usually make up about 95% of the mix. The remainder, added later, will be liquid asphalt cement. Each bin releases a specific amount of material onto a conveyor belt running under it. The belts lead to a main collecting belt. That dumps the ingredients combined together, yet another belt that leads to a dryer the drawing process, which takes about aminate removes all traces of humidity. This will enable the materials to bond better with the asphalt cement screening equipment, then resets the dried ingredients, making it possible to precisely weigh out the required amount of each one. Everything then goes into a mixer like this. Demonstration shows how the mixer blends everything thoroughly. Then it's time to pump in hot asphalt, cement, oil, and refineries. Now to make the asphalt cement. They use what's left over after they've processed crude oil for the paving. Mix contains about 5% asphalt cement. This is what happens inside the mixer. The hot asphalt cement finds the ingredients in about 30 seconds. The result is ready to lay paving asphalt. The mixer empties directly into trucks destined for the paving site.
There are long periods of planning and preparation that take place before even a single scoop of soil is moved. And when physical construction begins, there are things that go under the roadway that provide strength, structure. Here is how it works. Once the location of the roadway has been established, the first step is to evaluate the topography to determine the quality and strength of the existing material and how much soil will need to be removed or added. Before the construction process begins, the designer will consider potential impacts on the traffic system as well as the environment. This helps determine the best design for that particular location, such as the number of lanes and the path the road takes, as well as the thickness of the pavement itself. Once the engineers and the developer have chosen a design solution, the site will need to be cleared of debris or vegetation. Depending on the topography, there will be a certain amount of both cut and fill on the project or soil areas that need to be lowered or raised in elevation. The soil must be compacted in order to reach the proper strength to support the weight of the roadway and traffic. A grader machine is used to achieve the final grade or slope. Underlying electrical and water utilities and drainage are also constructed before the pavement is laid down. Stormwater pipes are installed along the length of the roadway according to the design. These pipes collect water from catch basins placed along the gutter. The storm pipes then feed into a larger system or possibly a detention pond. Roadways without a curb and gutter system may have ditches beside the shoulder, which also assist in transferring storm water. With the utilities installed and the soil at the proper grade can begin on the roadway structure. This typically starts with a stone aggregate base. The base may vary in size and thickness depending upon traffic and drainage condition. Asphalt is then paved onto the aggregate base by a paving train. The pavement can be applied in a number of layers and mixed types. Once the asphalt is compacted and cooled, it's time to paint the lane stripes and install reflectors, roadway signs, and possibly guardrails. The new roadway is open for business. If you want to know how cement is made, please watch the video on the screen. And please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.